changing subject. You can't stand directly to the trial judge. That is not ethical. And those ones, those. My Lord, I'll be brief. Number one, the law. We brought this application and among others, section 17 of the Judicature Act, in particular subsection two, where this court is enjoined, 17 two, where this honorable court is enjoined with inherent powers. A, to prevent abuse of the process of this court, and we insist this, these separate trials are an abuse of court process. I am fortified by the submissions of my land friend, Lord Mayor, in terms of the juxtapositions of dates, events, and uh, places. Number two, powers to make orders for expeditious trial. And don't forget A has re a reason of curtailing delays. Number three, to ensure substantive justice being administ administered without undue regard to technicalities, which is basically reproduction of Article 126 to C of the Constitution. I do not need to restate the powers of this Honorable Court under Section 33 of the Judicature Act because this court is the custodian of those laws. My Lord, the principles have been clearly elucidated, but let me be also find fortification in the decision of the old brother, the Honorable Justice Mubiru, Stephen. In the case of Aliobe Joseph and two others versus Uganda, which I, I have submitted to your Lordship, pages one to, one to two, are highlighted and he emphasizes the reason for consolidation. First he notes that the Trial and Indictments Act is silent on this subject of consolidation. Perhaps that's why my colleagues who have practiced criminal law long enough uh, were finding it alien. But he gave the principles and of course after considering a series of, of other uh, cases that enrich our jurisprudence. In particular, he addressed his mind to Section 17.2 of the Judicature Act. That is the first principle. One, avoid delays and therefore ensure um, an expeditious hearing and disposal of cases. The second is to avoid a miscarriage of justice. Miscarriage of justice, how? that you're asking the accused persons to defend themselves separately on allegations arising uh, out of a similar uh, set of circumstances. My Lord, the other reason for consolidation again is uh, <coughs> yes, jurisdiction. It is the jurisdiction of the High Court, again under this section. And we are in the same jurisdiction of the High Court. Never mind that there could be special procedural provisions which talk about the ICD in particular. But constitutionally, we're talking about the High Court. And indeed, it was not our choice of where to take this case, but the prosecution's case. A lot of the other emphasis is placed on the class of cases. If you go back to conventional criminal law, you find these are offenses, one, against the state, and offenses which involve violence. And as, the, as my land friend submitted, the motive of the so-called terrorism, which is now a political offense, is murder to intimidate. So you're going to find that the serialization of activities as alleged in the charge sheets will connect 
the cases. But you may also find pleasure. You will find that in some instances there have been specific on dates on the second day of August. But in other instances, they will simply say, between the month of January and August, and they say, in some cases, now they have lumped them in between. And of course, between the month of January and August, necessarily includes second August. Now in other cases, you're going to find on this date, that is the second. I want to invite your Lordship to look at Annex A, and I prefer using the Annex of the state. That is the respondent. Look at Annex B, and when, once you examine those ones, they will lead you to the same conclusion that these were serialized events, which are being talked about in the, those authorities that we, we, we have submitted. You'll also find, and I invite you to find a pleasure, I read paragraph 10. To apply, there must be a common factual origin. Now, the common factual origin is Masaka, Rakai, and Luengo. The other factual origin is the alleged participants. You're going to find they are interconnected. There must be a common factual origin, connection or nexus between the offenses. There is a connection in terms of uh, the juridical connection between murder, attempted murder, and terrorism, as you look at these offenses. But we are more fortified by the fact that the purported latter offenses were actually charged last. When they, they already had the purported offenses that were committed first. And the, con the court continues, and it must be convenient in all circumstances to try the offenses together, even for court's convenience, rather than separately. See Lodro versus Metropolitan Police Commissioner, and you'll read for yourself, my lord. My lord, sometimes the court says, failure to try related charges together would constitute a harassment, and I emphasize harassment, or unduly consume the time resources of the parties. <clears throat> and here for the parties are more concerned about the applicants. Because the state has the budget. These people have never prepared a budget for trial. And now they are being subjected to defend in Kampala and in Masaka, even when matters are related. The trial court should encourage joinder of charges for trial unless it determines the joinder is not in the best interests of justice. And that takes me to the affidavit of Mr. Malandi Fred, Mr. Thomas Jatiko. Mr. Thomas Jatiko, who is not on record as having participated in this case, in this court, claims that he's one of the prosecutors handling criminal, these criminal cases. And that is not true. You will examine your record. He's nowhere. And the prosecution is not in the DPP's office. Prosecution is in court. My Lord, Mr. Jatiko says that in paragraph 9, that the accused persons were released on bail. That one is also not true. They were granted bail, but they were not released. And the affidavit in support of the application explains it all. Indeed, my land friend has made submissions at length on this. Mr. Jatiko makes reference to a constitutional petition by Mr. Malema Bidiz. That is also alien to this court. It cannot be a reason to refuse consolidation. It's not even anywhere in the principles. Secondly, my lord, he claims that the, in paragraph 14, that the application or that these cases raise different questions of law. Because one murder is in Luengo, the other one is in Rakai. They raise different questions of law? Certainly not. Murder is murder, and only charged in one section of the penal code. The question that facts are different. Naturally, for every count, the facts will be different. That today you killed from Wengo, the other day you killed from Rakai. 
this day you killed, this day you were just persecuted. Facts will always differ. But once the series are interconnected and intertwined, then this is a, a proper case for consolidation. My Lord, he addresses delay. The delay is on their part. And indeed, you must have noticed that they do not want the matter to proceed. They keep saying, no, we have a PO. Then the next thing they say, there is Marima Virizi, who is not in this court. But the, the submission on delay is that actually it has been created or is likely to be created by separate trials and two by the state. Since August 2021 to date, it's a year. And who has stopped them from bringing evidence and prosecuting? A lot there is a question. I appreciate my lord. <laughs> my lord, thank you very much. Now, let's go to the miscarriage of justice that Mr. Jatiko talks about. And the, he also talks about the prejudice. How prejudicial is it consolidating two cases, hearing them at once? The witnesses are known by the state. In, this, in, in a number of them, we do not know them. They have them. The evidence... They have stated before this honorable court, they have finished. They committed the accused persons to court and said they are ready. So the best thing, my lord, is to, one, consolidate and guide <clears throat> on how to proceed. What happens if I may be of assistance to them, to my colleagues you know, for the state, and with immense respect, of course, is that once a matter is consolidated, it becomes one. But the counts remain counts in that final charge sheet. And they are duty bound to bring evidence on both of them. Indeed, we have the same prosecutor, more or less the same parties, and the same lawyers who will not find difficulty, therefore, in defending the same if consolidated. My Lord, considering the conduct of the state, that the accused have been granted bail before, and they, they have frustrated this, the same, they are incarcerated. If they were out, one, enjoying their free, right to freedom, two, representing their constituencies, we would afford to give all the time that the state needs. But considering that their freedoms are curtailed, they are not representing their people. The other co accused for whom I do not exactly speak are young people who have a life to live. The best interest would be to consolidate and charge them once and for all. The country will need to know are they guilty or not. So, my Lord, the How much time do you need? My Lord, I would request for 15 minutes, and my colleagues, my colleague Honorable said, gonna also 15 minutes. No, I'm going to fact. I, I need 20. Sorry, my Lord? No, no, my Lord. My Lord, I intend to ask. No, she was only giving. In that case, you're going to we have agreed, my lord, with your guidance uh, that uh, we will, the two of us will submit. So the two of you take 15 minutes. Ah, sorry. Yes, my lord. Most obliged, my lord. My Lord, the application is brought under the provisions of Article 28 of the Constitution, Section 27 and 33 of the Judicature Act. No, Section 17, rather, my Lord, not a second. 
and the 33 of the Judicature Act. I'll specifically address you um, Article 28, and the rest will be handled by my colleague. My Lord, the Constitutional Court has pronounced itself on this matter. that a trial based on a duplex charge is a nullity of initial, a nullity of initial, and amount to deprivation of the right of fair hearing And so is none joinja of offenses which ordinarily should be tried before the same court. The duplex charge amounts to an infringement of the rights to a trial based on a duplex charge amounts to deprivation of the right of fair hearing. And so is the most obliged, my lord. My lord, you to the decision of Kazinda Joffre versus the Attorney General. Constitutional petition number 30 of 2014. And the relevant aspects are on page 30, from page 31, where the principles are set out, up to page 34. Up to page 34. That's where the principles are set out, my lord. If I may, my lord. On the, Would you take the time? Would you no, take my lord, it's important because I'm addressing this particular point of law. Okay. Most obliged, my lord. And uh, they intend to raise an issue that this issue, of course, of joinder is alien. Of consolidation, rather, is alien. And that is a matter of law which I want to address okay. before they come. Uh, page 31, my lord, which is the rule of joinder of offenses is that where an accused person is alleged to have committed more than one offense, he may be charged in the same proceedings with all the offenses, provided that the offenses are founded on the same facts or form part of a series of offenses of the same, of a, of the same or similar character. Reference was made to section 86 of the MCA and uh, section 23 of the TIA. And my lord, the Constitutional Court quoted with approval decision of Duckin and uh, Duckin Review. And in this particular case, my Lord, the key word here or phrase is, was about cases or offenses of similar character. And the court took trouble to define the word series of offenses. What does the word series mean? And here, in the case of Packet versus the King, it is cited there, my lord, the word series, this is the observation of court, the word series is somewhat vague, but it connotes some connection between the crimes. The key element here, connection between the crimes alleged to have been committed. And court concluded, my lord, in page 32, that part which is highlighted, after analyzing that particular decision, that for two or more fences to constitute a series, 
there must be a nexus or connection between them if they are to be constituted to be constituting a series of offences, there must be connection between them. And fast forward, my Lord, on page 33, this is linked to Article 28. As already stated above, Article 28, 9 of the Constitution provides for the right to a fair hearing. A person who showed that he or she has been tried by a competent court for a criminal offence, and convicted or acquitted for that offense shall not again be tried for the offense or for any criminal offense of which he or she could have been convicted at the trial for that particular offense. And my Lord, that's where the principle is derived from, of subjected to that kind of trial. And these offenses, in my view, this was the conclusion of the court, fall within the definition of offenses of the same character and could adequately have been joined in one trial. Now this is the principle my Lord now said. The numerous trials for offenses similar in the character amounts to a deprivation of the right to a fair hearing and contravenes Articles 28, 1 and 9 of the Constitution. And uh, finally, my Lord, on page 34, court found in paragraph 5, failure to adhere to the above provisions of the Constitution would lead to duplicity of charges against an accused person which infringes on the right to a fair hearing. My Lord, in this particular case, 